everyone welcome to OCD recovery i want you to talk about giving up on recovery and completely being like i don't want to do this uh, i'm out so um, because i think that every ocd suffer at some point goes through it i also went through that believe it or not but because usually people think that oh that we were very hopeful and we kept going and everything felt you know very positive and upbeat and therefore the recovery journey wasn't hard for any of us but I mean, it literally was exactly what you would expect from it. So, um, but before I go on, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, let us know what you think. And I usually plan out my videos. Uh, I write them out, but I thought I would do more of a off the cuff kind of video on this one because it's just that, you know, when, when you're going through that time, you really cannot see how things would get better, right? And I think one of the things that can frustrate you in that moment, like really frustrate you is you trying, really trying hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think, at least for me, I think there were moments when I kind of also just had to give up trying to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. Like I had to just give up trying to f feel a certain way and force myself to feel positive and hopeful and upbeat about everything like I wasn't feeling that so I I like so I just stopped trying to you know force it I just thought if I'm feeling this way I'm feeling this way like there's there's not much I know I can do in this moment like of course I'm, I'm not saying that I didn't try to force my feelings there were many points I did try to force my feelings that was I would say one of my main compulsions but I think as I started to really work on recovery, trying to work more on rational thinking and acceptance as well, I think I I really did start to just kind of not put up that internal resistance and that fortress that we put, you know, on, on ourselves. Like, no, I can't feel that way and I don't want myself to feel that way. I, I just, and there was a certain freedom as well that I started to experience in those little moments of not like not forcing my feelings in any way because even though it really felt bad of course it felt bad but at least i wasn't exerting an added layer of pressure and stress on myself of why i wasn't feeling a certain way and i think the added stress and pressure is exactly what started to that that's where i was really getting caught up in my head and i was really slipping into feeling anxious and fearful all the time and just not I think just not allowing any ounce of negativity and ironically that's exactly what would I would say compound the negative thoughts and feelings as well so I think in that and there were so many different moments and so many different hurdles where I came across that you know that giving up kind of thing well I mean, first of all, I think in my initial years in going for like trauma therapy and things like that, I think I was constantly hoping that if I resolve this event and that event and this feeling from the past and that relationship dynamic from the past, I, I was just digging and digging and digging. And somehow I thought that once I am able to like tie up that last piece of the puzzle, somehow automatically the anxiety will also be wrapped up and done with of course i didn't know at the time what ocd recovery would entail right so and while that journey gave me like self-awareness and understanding about myself and a lot of my like family dynamics my dynamics with my friends and uh, other behavioral aspects, I did not uncover anything about OCD. In fact, on that end, I started to feel even worse than when I initially started because I, as specifically for OCD, there was no direction in like trying to uncover traumatic or other difficult events from the past, right? So that's where, that was, I would say, maybe my first time where I started to feel quite hopeless because I thought hey this this thing or this that I thought would help untangle this anxiety ball of wires in my head would make me feel better and it's not making me feel better so that was uh, my first I think instance of 
feeling a little hopeless and feeling like there wasn't any way out of this. My second instance of feeling hopeless was, I think when like a very, um, like, like a very well experienced uh, and renowned professional told me that there like, if you have OCD, you have OCD forever. And that kind of made me really hopeless as well because I thought, wait, I thought there would be some way forward from this. So how is it possible that to, like in the 21st century, we do not have ways of getting out of OCD, right? Um, and I mean, the, the implication was that I would just have to manage my symptoms and that's all. And that made me feel very like, you know, like, okay, I guess this is it for me. In retrospect, I do see that as, I do see that event as in a more positive light because I think after that I really started to lean into acceptance of my life as just like some I just accepted that you know maybe this these are the cards I'm dealt with this is what I have to deal with um I'll somehow make it work I mean I'll try to live the life I want to and I know it will be extremely inconvenient at many points I know that compulsions are going to make things extremely difficult to achieve, but I just somehow thought that I'll find a way to maneuver and I'll, I'll maybe I, I will find some way, right? That's just a notion I always went with, with any difficult situation, not just with OCD. I always thought whatever challenge I'm given, I'll still try to adapt to it and still try to find a way forward and maneuver through it, even if there are a lot of inconveniences and uh, difficulties that come my way right so but so in retrospect of course now I see it as like a positive thing but at the time I obviously didn't make me feel great at all so that was the second like point of hopelessness I think the third like it was kind of hopeless but not so much I mean it was like a lot of mixed feelings was when I had actually started to work on recovery and and started putting like the steps in place Actually, I need to mention this as well. So when I started to work on recovery, because at that point of one hurdle after the other and not really seeing anything that like that, that was really helping me or bringing my anxiety down or bringing my compulsions down. When I started working on OCD recovery with OCD recovery, I, I went in with no expectations and not from a cynical or negative point of view. I just, I think it actually ended up helping me because I did not fall into the trap of trying to recover compulsively or trying to do it just right. Because I went in thinking, let's see where this takes me. I, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I don't know how this is going to feel. I don't know how this is going to create internal shifts, but I'm just going to give it a go. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, uh, maybe I'll, I'll look for something else. Right. And again, in retrospect, I think that really helped me because it did not create that pressure to be recovered ASAP, do it correctly and have everything figured out as soon as possible. And even when I was reading the books, I wasn't internally searching. Oh, does this part make me feel this? Is my belief shifted? It has disputing like made my anxiety come down. Is this like the internal thermometer while outside of working on recovery that was 24 seven going on inside me. But whenever I was approaching recovery work, I, I wasn't really checking my internal feelings as to is this helping? Is that helping? Is that not helping? Because in, I just went into it with kind of like no expectations. So that helped in that sense. So, but as I started to work on it and I was like, oh, okay, I think I'm, I am starting to see things differently. And the myth of self-esteem was the first book that I read from the reading list because that was the only one available to me. And that really flipped the way I saw the world. I, I saw myself, it really, really changed that for me. And I think that it definitely was, I mean, I, I don't think I have thought the same and I know it sounds how like of a big hyperbole it sounds, but I really haven't had the same philosophy of life 
um, ever since reading that book in a good way um, because it really created like those internal shifts for me and so that's where I mean I, I would say it really started and I started to see okay I mean yeah I think I'm starting to see things differently I'm starting to feel differently as a result as well my anxiety had started to come down bit by bit as well as a result of those shifting beliefs that internal control that I was trying to put on my thoughts and my emotions constantly that also started to loosen up quite a bit I started to become a bit more flexible with allowing myself to feel negative emotions and sensations and not seeing them as this threat that had to be dismantled immediately um, again, the second, which is my my second personal favorite book from the list is At Last a Life. That helped with the philosophy of trying to do nothing if you're feeling bad and not having to fix anxiety, not having to fix your negative emotions or thoughts as soon as they pop up. It really helped see things uh, in a different light as well. I mean, the rest of the books were obviously, they massively helped as well and I think they were all part uh, pieces of the puzzle. Um, just, these are just my two personal favorites, The Myth of Self-Esteem and At Last Life. And so that's where I started to slowly think that, okay, maybe like there there's something to this and I this resonates with me a lot as well. I can see that, I can really see how I'm thinking in very rigid ways. I I definitely recognize that. But then the other point of hopelessness was that, um, well, firstly, again, I'm, I'm coming from a country where very specialized mental health help is limited, uh, especially for something like OCD. I mean, OCD is something I think even in the, on the Western side of the world is also not as, um, not as well understood. So I don't expect people over here as well to understand it that well. So there was that firstly, and I thought that I don't have any immediate in my environment kind of thing that I was uh, initially, I was trying to seek. So there was that and, um, and yeah, so I think also even with the books as well, because I had to, those, the, the books on the reading list aren't available in my country. So I had to ask friends or family who were going abroad to bring them for me. So I had to wait for an opportunity for that to happen <laughs> to actually start reading them as well. So that was delayed for me as well. And just the different delays and the different hindrances that came with trying to seek help were just making me feel a bit like, is this even going to be possible for me? Do I need to, um, is the lack of this and that going to not make me recover? Or am I going to be, am I going to implement a very patchy recovery plan for myself? What's going to happen? So there were those elements as well that were going on. But I, again, I thought that, okay, well, if it's patchy as well, at least I'm trying to do something for myself. Um, at least I'm trying to work on myself still and like gathering information as I go along. Maybe at some point I will streamline the recovery process for myself. But right now let's, let's do whatever I can with the circumstances and the situation uh, that I'm in. So with those internal shifts that were also, that started to happen with the beliefs and everything, I think that the next hurdle of feeling a bit hopeless was with exposures because I saw all these other people on the WhatsApp group talk about exposures, being able to do exposures I obviously read a lot of the posts that Rob made about, you know, how exposures are very important as well. And this is the interesting bit because more, I, I think most people, even now having like having worked with so many people at this point as well, like I think many people are comfortable with exposures or they see that as a more easier thing to do. They find the working on beliefs part difficult. For me, it was a complete opposite because I was more comfortable figuring things out in my head because I was always good with, I guess, philosophy and um, trying to dissect things, I guess, and think about and reevaluate things on a mental level. But I wasn't great at taking behavioral initiative and behavioral action. And especially with contamination OCD, when you feel like 
your entire world has been conquered by fear quite literally because it's like i think and i i'm going to do a separate video on like how contamination ocd really feels is you feel like every single corner of your world has just like been taken over by this fearful touch that you can't touch this you can't touch a lamp a bottle a table a doorknob the light switches the floor the bed sheets the chair like every single thing becomes contaminated so then you don't even know where to start and you're thinking okay do i start with one object a day or do i need to do several objects a day no but this one seems scary but everything also seems scary and i had gotten to a point where and this is very common for uh, contamination ocd as well i had come to a point where literally all my exposures had were like a level 100 exposure there was no exposure for me that was a low level exposure so for me the hierarchy of like from low level to high level exposures just did not exist um everything was because at that point all all like you know scariest surfaces had had touched each other like everything was basically there was a domino effect that where everything was associated with exactly the same level of anxiety so that made me also hopeless because i'm like well all the all these other people are working through like a hierarchy of exposures i don't have an uh, have a hierarchy of exposures all these other people are able to build up to it i have never found i don't like the motivation i don't like like the confidence and that's also something that tried making me feel quite um different because i thought i don't have the bravery and if i'm not brave then i can't do exposures so i'm lacking that key ingredient right and and this is where the mixed emotions came in which i was just referring to earlier because there i i genuinely came to a place of acceptance that this is as good as it gets for me like yes i have worked on my beliefs and my anxiety has lowered as a result of it but this is as far as it goes for me i am recovery is for other people i'm maybe just not one of those people maybe i just have to live with physically avoiding things in my life and the mixed emotions here were that there was a certain level of despondency that okay so this is as far as i can go this is this is the limit for me i guess um but then it was also a peace a, a place of peace as well in a strange way because i had i had just stopped like like i i genuinely just made peace with okay this is my life now like this is as far as my life goes so there was there was a peace because that again that stress and pressure on myself was was gone and i felt okay i thought well at least i have you know i have experienced like 50 60% of progress that's still good that's still good at least i'm not internally like feeling as drowning in like depressive feelings and anxiety anymore and i thought i'll i'll take what i can get <laughs> that was the kind of approach i started to really implement in life honestly but obviously in retrospect now i realize that the reason i had also just come to accept that was because i just did not want to do exposures they felt like the most terrifying thing in the world and i just wanted to avoid them at all costs right so even even that thing of like okay this is as good as it gets was coming from a place of yeah i don't want to do that i don't want to do the scary things but also because in my head it was conceptualized as i need bravery motivation and drive to be able to do them i did not at the time still realize that i could go on doing these difficult things even if i didn't feel motivated even if i didn't feel brave enough i had to do them scared and i had to do them demotivated that concept was a new concept for me to be honest like i didn't realize things could be done that way but it was a massive eye opener for me because i thought hey um and even with exposures it was the same approach as well because i knew that that was still something that had to be done and that still had to be worked on and when i really decided okay i want to give exposures a shot i 
went into them with also no expectations. Of course, absolutely terrified. Um, I can't tell you how terrified I was that I was doing something completely wrong by doing exposures. But I went in thinking that I don't want to attach any expectations. Again, if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, then I guess I might, I, I might not do them again. And that's what I was thinking at the time. Um, so yeah, I just, I went for, when I went for them, I was like, oh, okay, this is helping. So I'm pleasantly surprised uh, because I didn't think they would help. I didn't think it would make any difference for me. I thought I would completely, it would completely dismantle my life. So I think what, what I'm trying to explain with the story is that at every step of the way, there was some, there was some hurdle or there was some challenge that made me feel like that's as far as I could get or that there was no way forward for me. Um, I also felt hopeless because um, I've not come across anybody else with my specific theme and fear as well. Still, to date, by the way, I still haven't. And that's also what made me feel quite, like, stuck. I thought this was it um, because nobody else goes through this. So maybe my theme either is real or that there's no specific, like, approach or something that has been contextualized to this kind of fear. So I thought... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think this would work, but I mean, it did. Um, even if the fear was unique and something I've not come across. So, so there's hope over there as well, but that was, that was, that's hope that I'm now saying that there's hope because I went through it. At the time, I didn't feel like it was a very hope, uh, hopeful place to be in. But what I'm just trying to say is that at different points in the journey, you will come across moments and hurdles where you will feel like this is it or it won't get better or that there is a challenge that just cannot be overcome or that you're lacking a certain emotion or feeling or drive or something that is going to help you take the next step but in each of those instances it's about kind of putting in the work even when you don't expect it will do anything even if you feel like it's not going to move any mountains, even if you feel like you are not feeling motivated or brave enough, sometimes you just have to do the things because you have to do the things for recovery, right? Whether it's exposures, whether it's reading the books, whether it's trying to attend a one-to-one -one call or a webinar, or whether it's, um, I don't know, disputing and breaking down your beliefs or changing your life structure. Um, I did a lot of those things without, like I said, without any expectations, but also not knowing whether this will go anywhere or not, but doing it just because I thought that, okay, this is, I guess, what I have to do at least. And I also went with the mindset that if I, if I've been doing things the same way for so many years, then clearly that hasn't helped. Maybe doing them in a different way, at least I have to give it a shot, right? Because my ways are, have clearly made me feel much worse over time. So I can at least try this something new and try to change things up again. And if that helps, great. If it doesn't, I guess I'll figure something else out then, <laughs> really. So and seeing each and every moment as a learning curve. And again, that philosophy, I take that into life as well. Every single hurdle, every single challenge, every single low point is a learning curve and a point to gather more wisdom. And that's what I've done through even all these low points that I've mentioned in this call, not call, in this video right now as well. Um, so yeah, um, I've been through those moments of giving up as well that you know, I, I, I don't want to do anything more. I don't have the energy. I don't have the interest. Just leave me alone. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and if you're feeling that way as well, you'll, you'll get out of that as well by taking the steps, doing things, even if you don't feel like it and seeing where that takes you, giving yourself a good, serious shot at things then. So I hope this video helps and pop up any questions or comments you have down below and i'll see you guys soon bye